Can you download your family tree uh, from familysearch.org? That is a common question I get a lot. And we're gonna talk about that here in just a moment. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family research. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the show notes below. As a reminder, this is not sponsored by anyone, so the opinions here are totally mine. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so we're over here on the computer and we are going to see if we can download familysearch.org. Uh, but the reality is, can you? No, you technically can't, but there are a lot of workarounds. So we're gonna talk about that here right now. Also, as a side note, for those of you who are on Ancestry, you can share that tree with another. I've done another video about that, but um, right now we're going to be talking about uh, family search and how you could download your tree. Now, why would you? So maybe you want to share that tree with somebody else. Uh, of course, all you have to do is share a link uh, to your family tree uh, to another with another person if you wanted to share that uh, your family tree with somebody because it's open to everybody. It's a public tree. And also, everyone should understand that FamilySearch.org, your family tree there, is a collaborative tree. So if you're not familiar, that familiar with Family Search, anyone can change that tree. It is one giant tree that everybody is working on together. And uh, so if you and other people, three, let's say three or four other people, are working on the same lines, uh, they could be changing it, and for some people that's upsetting. So for some, uh, they choose to be on some place like MyHeritage or Ancestry or some other place. However, <clears throat> having said all that, you can download your family tree to a third-party software. And so what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to um, Family Search. Now, I've been emailing back and forth with them exactly how you can do that. And so let me jump over to this list. So this list is, is a list of software that does integrate in part or in whole with Family Search. And so these uh, software, and I will leave a link for you. Oh, by the way, I've also created a handout. We'll talk more about that here in a minute. So these software programs integrate with family tree uh, family search and you can download your family tree to them i am most familiar with family tree maker so we're going to jump over to family tree maker and i'll show you how it works over there but one thing that you should know is if you click through let's click through to um family tree maker here okay so they're also telling you that there is a price tag for this. I don't know if this is the current price or not, but let's dive into their information about Family Tree Maker. And this is not sponsored by anybody. I'm not saying that you should buy Family Tree Maker. This just happens to be the one I'm more familiar with. So if you scroll all the way down, there's a section down here. It says Family Search Compatibility. It says this app can read information from Family Search, uh, from your Family Search account. So you could download. Uh, the data from Family Search. However, while you're using your Family Tree Maker software, you cannot upload. See, it says this app cannot update information into fam the Family Search account. So, therefore, you could manipulate it all you want on your Family Tree Maker, but you can't send it back up to Family Search. So, just be mindful of that. Um, and I'm going to give you a little demonstration here about Family Tree Maker here in just a moment. So if we go back to this uh, Family Tree Management area where it shows you what, and you can find this in the support area, by the way, what software is compatible. If you click on the Ancestral Quest software and then scroll down to the bottom, here it does say that you can read the information from your Family Search account. This app can update information from this Family Search account, and this app can support LDS features. So 
I'm just letting you know that there's differences. Don't just grab one off of that list and assume that uh, this is good to go for uh, any, uh, any of them. So do your homework, uh, dig into it. But if you want to download that information and at least get started, if you're, especially if you're new, but you want to maybe go um, to Ancestry or some other place, you could download the tree information and play with it on your software and start working with it uh, from there. For those of you who are exclusively on Family Search, uh, Ancestral Quest might be a good option for you if you uh, decide that you need to have a software on your computer to play with offline. Um, also know that Ancestry users, there is no syncing capability between Family Search and Ancestry. They do not talk to each other at all. Um, so be mindful of that. There is an Ancestry uh, note here. But if you click through, you'll notice all the way down at the bottom, Family Search compatibility. It does not. It does not download. It does not upload. It does not talk at all. They're just giving you that information about uh, uh, more capabilities uh, using Ancestry. So we're going to jump over to uh, Family Tree Maker. So if you're not familiar with Family Tree Maker, when you first uh, log in, this is typically the view that I get um, and if you'll notice up here you've got several tabs across the top you've got plan people places media sources publish and web search and so in order to be able to download or sync from family search you need to be on the plan tab and then what you need to do is really go over here and click new tree and if you'll notice right here, it says you can download a tree from Family Search. Now, you do need to be logged in to Family Search first before you can do this, and it'll prompt you if you're not. You can also tell if you're logged into Family Search because up here in the corner there is a, a Family Search icon that says I am logged in. So once you're logged in, uh, you can create a new family tree. I'm going to call this uh, the Knox Family Tree from Family Search so that I know exactly where it came from. And one of the things you need to notice here is it says uh, it's identified me already because on Family Search, I have associated my account with who I am in the world tree. Now keep in mind, that family search is that collaborative giant tree and you know everybody's working on it so that's the identifier for me in that tree and then one of the things you need to pay attention to is the number of ancestors that we're going to import so we can import a lot if we wanted to or very little now the first time I did this stupid me I left that and I went on and hit you know import and I got my parents because I left it on one generation. So make sure that you go up here and you say, oh, I want however many generations you want, and then the number of descendants. So I really want the ancestors, so I'm gonna download the nine generations. However, if you're trying to figure out living people or cousin matches or whatever for your DNA research, it might be helpful to pull down the, the descendants too, but I don't want this giant database. So I'm looking for this. I'm going for the nine generations of ancestors. And where it's going to be located on my computer is fine. And then I hit continue. And it's downloading. Now this might be an actual great idea. If you're working in Ancestry and uh, you want to compare your ancestors to what other people on Family Search are doing, you can actually bounce between the two trees on Family Tree Maker because I've already downloaded the Ancestry tree. Um, and so, and that's the one I work on primarily is, is the Ancestry tree. So now I'm downloading information about uh, Family Search's information. Download interrupted, no tree created, the connection dropped during the download. Try downloading again. Interesting. All right, I got an interruption again. So what I'm going to do is reduce the number of generations to about five and try it again. 
Well, it didn't like the five generations either, so we're gonna try and keep reducing this until we get uh, something else. And I, something else I noticed too was that it changed the name of the tree uh, to Family Search Tree. And so now let's jump down to four generations and see if that works. Bingo, looks like this time it was able to uh, download, I think it was four generations that we did on the last round. So. Um, that's a big start. Now this is the descendants view. Now keep in mind when we did this, all we did was we downloaded the ancestors. We did not download the descendants. So we could have picked a, probably an ancestor and downloaded descendants as well. That is not something I choose to do right now, given that it was as challenging as it was. And now I've got this tree in here and most of this uh, uh, this information is information that I've already uploaded, but it certainly would be interesting to see what we have. This Joel Davis, uh, ironically, is somebody I uploaded as a hypothesis in Ancestry, so it looks like somebody may have copied it over. But in Family Tree Maker, you have this uh, side panel with everybody that it has downloaded. So here's kind of a, a cheater's way of working around. So in this case, we downloaded from Family Search. We could actually upload to any other service by using a GEDCOM file. So you could go over here to File and hit Export. And it gives you some warnings and you say, yeah, yeah, sure, and hit <laughs> Continue. And normally it's going to export as a Family Tree Maker backup. Um, but you can come down here and hit GEDCOM and then export it as a GEDCOM file. Now that's just going to be the data. Then you could turn around and upload it to Ancestry. So it's uh, kind of a, a three or four step process there, but you could technically, if you wanted to get from Family Search to Ancestry, you could do that by downloading it from Family Search to a new tree and then exporting it using file, export, and then choose GEDCOM. And I'm gonna cancel out of that because I don't care to do that, but then turn around and save that on your desktop, let's say, log into Ancestry and then upload it uh, to uh, Ancestry. Now, that's how you could do it, but I really advise you to uh, do your homework in either Family Tree Maker or whatever software you're using before you go and upload it to Ancestry because when you do and you make that tree public now it's gonna if the information is not correct whatever mistakes were on Family Search and it came down to your computer and then you uploaded it to uh, Ancestry the mistakes are going with it and other people are going to import that thinking it's the gospel truth because they don't realize that everything needs to be verified. So just a word of caution there if you're going to do that. So uh, if if you want to download from Family Search and you want to upload to Ancestry or MyHeritage or whatever, uh, there is a workaround. You could download it, export it as a GEDCOM, turn around and upload it to one of the other services and probably save you a ton of time. Just check the data before you do that so that we're not spewing a lot of bad information. If there's bad information coming down off of uh, Family Search, just check your check your uh, references and check your records and make sure everything is clean uh, before you upload it somewhere else. But that is how you can uh, download from Family Search if you need to. Um, there is a handout for channel members. If you are interested in that, channel members, if you're not a channel member, you can become a channel member by hitting the join button uh, below this video or any of the videos on Genealogy TV and choose the member, the information access level, uh, get you the handouts and that kind of stuff when I uh, produce them for the different videos. This one definitely has one and I will have that step-by-step -step process in there uh, for you. All right, I hope that was helpful. If so, give me a thumbs up. And we'll catch you next time.